any advice if my partner doesn't want to get involved in talking to our kids about sex? And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car with you each week answering a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. So this question is about partners and getting involved with conversations about puberty, bodies and sex. And really, actually, this question is about consent. I remember when our kids were quite small and the local playground that we would take them to had this big structure, it looked like a big pyramid made of ropes and the kids would love to climb up that thing and every time they went higher than maybe my shoulder height I would just be a blathering mess of anxiety and I, I couldn't be the parent I needed to be to support their explorations and um, their discovery of what their body could do. So my co-parent, John, he would be the person who could sit beside and stand beside that pyramid and um, monitor and support and make sure everything was going out okay. And our child and our children, all our children actually, would be able to have the opportunity to climb up that pyramid without a parent down there going, come back, come back, it's too dangerous. Right? Not my finest parenting hour, but let's be real, right? We all have different skills and different strengths and different abilities that we bring to our parenting. And so conversations about puberty, body and sex are no different. They are no different. There may be um, more pressure actually to have conversations with our children about puberty, bodies and sex because um, we're not expected, well we are expected actually, to be able to just do those conversations, right? Without going through some sort of formal instruction process or, um, or practicing that. Whereas no one would have pushed me into supporting our children to climb up a high thing if they could see my obvious anxiety about it. So let's talk about this question about what happens when we're co-parenting with someone who doesn't feel comfortable having these conversations too. Point one, not everybody can do everything in just everyday life, but that equally applies to parenting too. Not everyone can do this. So we need to acknowledge our partner's discomfort or their inability to the, do this part of parenting. Um, I sort of think about it in terms of sex too. Like just because one person is good at, let's say, giving blowjobs, does that mean that the second person feels equally as comfortable and takes as much enjoyment in giving blowjobs? No, not at all. And in fact, we wouldn't then pressure the second person to give a blowjob just because the first person is able to give a blowjob. So same sort of consent issues can apply to this part of our parenting too. Nobody has to do this part of our parenting. Our children benefit from open, comfortable conversations about bodies and puberty and sex, but no one should feel pressured to go against their um, abilities and their um, feelings of comfort and in fact maybe even their feelings of safety. Point two, not everyone comes to the job of talking about puberty, bodies and sex equally. For example, in English-speaking Western world, men or people raised as men or people who identify as men would be less encouraged or have less experience talking about things to do with this. It might have traditionally been seen as part of the caring role or women's work, right? So we need to take that into account too, that not everyone is treated equally when it comes to this part of parenting. You could also say that uh, masculine sexuality or, or um, masculinity and parenting is still a fairly new uh, union, right? So parenting traditionally would have been sort of the women's work again, remember? And, and men would have been asked to babysit if, um, if the female parent or one of the other parents was going out. So we are in still relatively new territory when we are expecting fathers or masculine people uh, to actively be involved in parenting 
in all aspects of it. So that's not to say they shouldn't be and they're not able to be, but I'm saying that sometimes they have to overcome um, more roadblocks in doing this part of parenting anyway than say a femme, a female, a woman, mum, whatever would do. So that's point two. Point three, if you have a co-parent and if that co-parent is not able to do a part of conversations about puberty bodies and sex then it's going to be really important to make sure that if you are the parent that is able to talk about it even just a little bit that you need to care for yourself so what does caring for yourself look like maybe it's giving some of the other parenting responsibilities over to your co-parent if you have a co-parent so that you can devote more time and energy and learning on how to do puberty bodies and sex conversations even better maybe caring yourself looks like finding a community of supportive parents or other adults who understand that this part of parenting is important and uh, encourage you and have your back when you are trying new things maybe it also looks like finding resources so that you are really clear on the easiest way to start conversations about bodies puberty and sex uh, where are the age appropriate topics for the age and stage your children are at and um, learning more about why the awkwardness might arise in your body because the awkwardness is very real and it's not helpful to us if we just pretend it's not actually there. So let's sum up. Point one, not everyone has the capacity to do this part of parenting and it is an act of consent to acknowledge that. Point two, not every gender is encouraged to do nurturing parts of parenting in the same way. And so some people have more roadblocks to get over. And point three, how do we support ourselves if we are the solo parent or the only parent in a parenting relationship that can do this part of parenting even just a little bit? This episode of Sitting in a Car is brought to you by the Become a Comfortable Parent Workshop series. The Become a Comfortable Parent Workshop series is designed for parents just like you to learn how to become even more comfortable talking about puberty, bodies and sex. Become a Comfortable Parent is running one more time this year in 2020. So head on over to sarahsproul.com forward slash comfortable sarahsproul.com forward slash comfortable to make sure you get notified when that workshop starts and that's sitting in a car for another week where i've answered a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them and while i've got you here can i ask for your help would you like repost or subscribe to sitting in a car When you do that, other parents just like you can find the information and support they need to do this part of their parenting even better. Thanks for that and bye for now.